she text messaged me. Yeah, she is off to Colorado. Thank you for that. All right, everyone. Let's find ourselves in the comfortable space. I want to welcome you once again to our chakra journey. This week we are focusing on the fifth chakra. So the fifth chakra, we've been through a journey of four so far. We've started from the ground up and now we are right here. The fifth chakra represents our throat chakra. I'm going to turn that music down just a little bit. Represents our throat area and the throat chakra is represented by our right to speak and to be heard it's a very important chakra as they all are they all have their own uh, unique um, unique uh, capabilities and unique attributes. The throat chakra is symboled with the color blue, um, so a very warming and soothing color. And like I said, it is surrounded, the throat chakra is generally located right here along the throat and the neck and the mouth area. Again, very representative of our right to speak and our right to be heard in that area. The basic issues, if you will, with this chakra is communication and self-expression, creativity. The seed word, and each chakra has a seed word, and I think we've, each of them you've seen in the, in the program, uh, or I've invited them to us, um, but this one is called HAM, H-A-M, and it is pronounced Hum, hum. So very, very coming out from the throat space, very much. Um, you can almost feel the vibration when you say hum, it's kind of circulating itself in our throat. The Sanskrit word for the throat chakra is Vishuddha. Vishuddha, spelled V I S S U uh, V I S. S S A U D H A, and it means especially pure. As the throat chakra governs our mouth, tongue, and neck, it relates to communication and our ability to understand and speak your inner truth purely. When it is out of balance, one has a difficulty staying true to themselves and expressing their needs, desires, and opinions with themselves and others. And this is a really relevant point. Um, I think we've all at some point in our lives have experienced that inability to fully communicate what we're feeling. And I know for myself, this is a struggle that I have almost on a daily basis, of uh, feeling like I have the right to express my opinions, I have the right to say when I like something and when I don't like something, um, and I have the right to express my needs. Um, something that many of us struggle with because we're fearful of maybe hurting someone else's feelings, maybe letting someone down, um, and perhaps not being able to fully um, support the other person because what is within us doesn't necessarily support um, or is in conjunction with what the other person may need or another person or people. So it is a pretty significant chakra and it might be something that you in your daily lives find it hard um, or not find it hard, but find it something as something that you may find a bit of blockage in because we have this inability to communicate. Um, when we are out of balance in the throat chakra, in Vishuddha, 
you may feel shy. You may feel like your voice is weak. It doesn't have that power, that strength to fully communicate. There's a fear of speaking. There's even this inability to listen, the inability to really comprehend another person. Lying, arrogance, thyroid issues, hearing issues, and throat problems. These are all kind of traits that may relate to an imbalanced Vishuddha chakra. When you are imbalanced with the chakra, you feel the sense of peacefulness, truthfulness. You have the ability to fully listen to other people, good communication, strong self-expression, and a sense of harmony and balance within yourself. Now, I know that for myself, um, when I cannot speak my truth, when I cannot truly express what it is my needs are, there's almost like this sense of being locked within myself. It's like there's something in me that wants to let it out, but I can't, or there's this feeling that I, I can't. Um, and then there's other times where I've been in situations where I fully expressed what I needed, what I liked, and what I didn't like. Um, and there was this sense of release, this sense of peace, this sense of harmony, of being able to be true to myself. I'm sure at some point in our lives, we've all experienced that as we have experienced the other side of being unable to purely communicate and speak. Sound, vibration, words, music, voice, communication are all aspects relating to the fifth chakra. Um, the idea of Vishuddha being purification is as we release the sounds from our, um, I'll say our mouth, um, or sounds from our body, it, the sound purifies and orders the energy body in getting it ready for higher consciousness. So there's this idea that the release of our ability to communicate um, is kind of like this way of this entry into higher consciousness, especially when we're in balance with our throat chakra, because we're moving in from a place of truthfulness and uh, truth to oneself. And that is truly what we're seeking in, um, in our yoga practice is for inner truth, for this connection to a higher consciousness. And we do that through our ability to communicate. Vishuddha, this throat chakra, also filters messages that would, um, messages from our body that would then communicate up to the mind and kind of floods out any unnecessary distractions. So there are times when you might find yourself having this like kind of this spiraling thought process and Vishuddha is really there to be able to filter out those things that are really unnecessary, possibly even untrue. Uh, we often say are our harshest critics and, um, and Vishuddha is really there to purify and kind of muddle through some of that stuff before we can really allow it to come into our mind um, so it doesn't distract us, so we don't get kind of pulled away from our consciousness and our true self. Um, the fifth chakra is your creative identity. Now, as we all know, creativity is really a foundation of communication. It is a way of expression, uh, a way to really be true to ourselves as a, as a means of being allowing ourselves to be fully expressive. It kind of is, is an internal expression of us, of our, in, uh, of our insides, if you will, of our heart. Um, and communication is a great act of creativity. It, is, it, is, uh, it moves energy from the inner world 
um, of thoughts and feelings and expresses them out to the outer world. So our, our form of expression is really a form of creativity as well. The um, way we communicate, whether you're someone who's very boisterous, very outgoing, is an expression of yourself, um, as is someone who may be shy and a little bit more reserved is also an expression of yourself. It is a representa representation of um, this creative identity that you have within you. Um, the basic right to speak and the basic right to be heard is often compromised by personal, professional, um, social, even political situations that are out there in the world. Um, certainly, we don't always speak everything that comes to mind. That might not always be so helpful. Um, but it is influenced by external factors, um, some that are within us that we personally think to ourselves and wouldn't necessarily communicate, but is also very much influenced by um, by external factors like things, you know, out in the world, especially with our political climate that we've had. There's a lot of communication that's been going around that hasn't been necessarily very helpful. Um, so, you know, there are, you know, there are things where we kind of hold back because we know it wouldn't be very useful and it would cause conflict. Some things to think about when we think about the throat chakra and our form of communication. Um, questions, if you will, that you might think about as you reflect upon this chakra, just to try to identify if there's any areas of imbalance here, would be, do you feel like you have the right to speak and express your opinions within maybe your family, your friends, your world? Um, are there instances that you feel like you speak, but you're not being heard? Um, that is also part of this chakra as well. We want to be able to speak, but we also really want people to hear us. Um, I was reading recently a Brene Brown book, and, um, and one of the things she found in her research was what people really are seeking is the ability to be heard um, and to be listened to. And I'm sure we've all experienced situations where we didn't feel like we didn't feel like the people we were communicating really heard us or that they were already coming up with another answer to kind of counteract what we were going to say. Um, are there instances where you might not grant this right to others, maybe not listening to them? Is that something maybe we need to think about with regards to the chakra? Do we also find ourselves not granting others that um, reciprocal a relationship of listening to the other person? So take a moment to maybe stop your thought process when you're in a conversation with someone and allow your thoughts to quiet and simply focus on the other person and their what they are communicating um, to you. And do you feel like your voice is being heard? Again, this, I've said this several times already. It's do you feel like when you talk that it's being heard uh, within your family? It is, um, it is uh, respected, <laughs> if you will, um, that your opinions matter and your opinions count. Opinions and thoughts. Some things that would help to um, open up the Vishuddha. So some practices we can do. Singing. <laughs> it's always a good one. Obviously, it's one where we use our throat or maybe perhaps reciting a mantra. Uh, just that repetitive nature of repeating that mantra over and over again really uses that throat and really allows that throat chakra to open up. Um, 
Om is a really good one as well. Om is that universal sound that we have within the universe. And that is a wonderful uh, word to chant. And I know some of you are not familiar with chanting and it might seem a little scary or a little funny to do. Um, I've actually found it to be very, very uh, restorative. It really, when I, when I get out of my head of what I sound like and I really let myself be free with that, it is a very, very uh, liberating practice to be able to chant Om or to be able to chant um, anything else. It could be a word that you, you want to use. Uh, it could be a mantra that you want to use. Um, things like aromatherapy. Some people are, are really into aromatherapy. Um, I am, but not, I'm not so familiar with it. So I, I light a lot of incense in my house um, and candles and things like that. Um, frankincense, which is a very grounding uh, um, oil, uh, would be great because it really uh, connects back to the earth. There's other um, scents that's stated here, geranium. Jasmine, sage, cypress, peppermint, eucalyptus, clove, tea tree oil, and lavender are also wonderful oils to use to be able to open up the throat chakra. Um, positive affirmations about authenticity. So repeating affirmations to yourself to um, set an intention and break old patterns uh, of thought thought process and create new ones is a really nice way to be able to kind of change that thought process that we may have um, and it opens the heart chakra the heart sh the throat chakra um, by repeating the affirmations that relate to authenticity and communication it is really a nice way to be able to check in with yourself are you being authentic to you are you being communicating and uh, you know honoring you and what you need to say and and how you want to live um, things like I communicate confidently with ease maybe repeating that I communicate confidently with ease um, I feel comfortable speaking my mind. Repeat that. I feel comfortable speaking my mind. These are just a few, and I'll, I'll send these to you uh, in a link so that you can maybe use them for yourself. Some may resonate with you, some may not. Uh, and I'll just walk through. There's about four more here. Um, I am balanced in speaking and listening. I am an active listener. I speak my truth with ease. I set clear boundaries. These are all really wonderful affirmations. And you'll notice that they talk about it, uh, affirmations are spoken of in the, the present tense as, as you are really in it and practicing it. Uh, it's not I will set clear boundaries, it is I am setting clear boundaries and really speaking at it from a sense of you are actually practicing that right now. Um, of course, asanas, which we're going to be practicing shortly, is another way to open up the throat chakra from a, a physical sense and connecting into that chakra. And we're going to be doing some poses today that will allow for us to open up that space. But let's begin first um, by finding a comfortable position. And we're going to go through... Um, just a lovely meditation to start our practice off today. And it's a breathing meditation for the throat chakra. So if you want to uh, sit down or lie down, it's really entirely up to you. As always, make it work for you. And as you find yourself becoming comfortable wherever you are, whether you're lying down or seated. If it feels safe, go ahead and close your eyes. This is your time now. So let's take a moment to leave all your worries at the door. Imagine that you walk through the door of your room and everything else that you needed to take care of just stayed at the door. 
Allow yourself to relax and flow into the moment. Whatever comes easily for you is just right. There is only right here, right now. The future and the past do not exist right now. Notice any sounds outside of the room. Acknowledge them and then let them go. Notice any sounds inside the room. Notice them and then let them go. Tell your body to relax. Maybe repeat a few times silently to yourself. Relax, body. Relax, body. Let your feet and your legs soften. Drop your shoulders, relax your hands. Allow your full body to soften and to relax into a natural position. Now tell your head and your face to relax. Soften your eyes, your nose, your cheeks, your eyebrows, your throat. Allow the scalp of your head and your hair to relax. Maybe soften through the jaw and separate your mouth. Maybe allow your teeth to separate and to soften through the tongue. Go back to your forehead and relax that space, that little space right between the eyebrows. Take a deep cleansing breath in. And as you exhale, relax your body as you release the air, leaving your body. Take another breath in. And let go of any tension you may be holding on here. Just soften everything. Let it all release. Now allow your body to breathe in at its own natural pace, not forcing the breath in, not forcing the breath out. Let it find its own natural rhythm. Observing the breath entering in inviting relaxation and the breath out, releasing tension.
If thoughts intrude, allow them to pass by, wave them out of this room, and return your attention back to your breath. Continue to breathe in and to breathe out. Now let's bring our attention to our throat area. And I want you to imagine a lovely light blue sky light lit right around the throat area, swirling around like a whirlpool. Try to notice how it feels, how it looks, kind of swirling around that throat area. Maybe you can even visualize it. Try to notice and how it feels as you clear your throat. Try to get a sense of how it's functioning. Can you feel any tingling? What thoughts are popping up into your mind? Is this swirling energy moving? And at what speed is it going at? Does it feel fast, slow, a little small, a little large? Can you see any other colors that might be swirling through your mind? Now visualize again this blue light around your throat area and just watch as this blue glow starts to spread gently out and get bigger and bigger as it spins. It's expanding your space. Now bring your attention to your breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. And as you breathe in, visualize, visualize this color of turquoise down in your throat area. With every breath in, you pull in more of this fresh blue light, allowing it to fill your chakra and your neck, spreading out into your whole body Breathing in blue light down into your chest, your arms, your hands, down your trunk, your legs, your feet. Breathing in blue light up into your head, letting it fill your entire body and connecting it with all the other chakras we have spoken about so far. As you breathe in the turquoise blue light, it brings you truth, clear expression, and good listening. As you breathe out, the blue light releases any blockages. 
feel the lovely blue light as it gently spins and en uh, engulfs you. Breathing in blue light, breathing out tension. Tell yourself you are clear, you are truthful, you are expressive. Breathing in blue light, breathing out tension. Imagine again the spinning blue light. Imagine it opening up like a twirling flower, stretching out wide in diameter. Now see the light and energy of divine positive guidance pouring into you, into your mind, into your hearing, enlightening every cell of your being. Hold this image for two big breaths. Bring your attention to your chest area, to the green light of the heart chakra, our Anahata chakra. The swirling blue light becomes a little smaller and smaller. And it brings itself down to the size of a little fairy light, bringing it back down to its normal function. Repeat to yourself, my throat chakra is working at normal function. Bring your awareness back to your flow of your breath in and your breath out. Notice the cool breath as it comes through your nose and down the back of your throat into your lungs. Notice the natural movement of your tummy as you breathe in and out. Bring awareness to your full body again as it rests against the floor or seated. Bring your attention to your toes and give them a little wiggle. Then to your fingers and give them a little wiggle. Give your shoulders a little shrug and let yourself bring your attention back to the room again. All of the sounds nearby. And when you feel ready at your own beautiful pace, feel free to open your eyes again. As you're ready, let us circle sweep our arms all the way tall. If you're lying down, we'll come up to seated. And we'll bring our palms to our heart center. And let us set our intention for our practice today. Maybe your mantra for your practice relates to being heard. Maybe you simply want to repeat, I am heard. And then as you're ready, let us take a big breath in through the nose as we extend the arms up overhead, releasing the left arm down and placing the right hand on the left side of the crown and gently guide the neck over to the right side. Gently guiding the neck without forcing, allowing the throat space to open on the left side as we reach with our left arm long. As you're ready, breathe in, extend the arms up overhead and reach down with the right arm, guiding the left fingertips over to the right side of the body as we open our throat space on the right side. 
gently guiding your ear to your th sh shoulder and just finding this gentle opening. As you're ready, release your left hand, rest your hands down to the floor, and then begin to open up through the neck as we gently create some gentle circles with the neck, focusing on opening up through the throat space. And simply noticing different areas of our neck, maybe noticing any tension, just observing them without judgment. And then perhaps let's reverse our circle in the opposite direction, loosening up through the neck. Beautiful. And then as you're ready, coming back in through center. And just take a moment to just notice your neck. Maybe soften through the throat. Maybe noticing the ungluing of the teeth. And then as you're ready, we're going to come into our all fours position. So if you have a blanket for your knees, go ahead and grab it. We're going to get ready for our cat-cow. And today we're going to do our cat-cow with lion's breath. Um, lion's breath is a wonderful opener of the throat. Um, I know, Sarah, you're at the office right now, so <laughs> you might not feel comfortable, especially if there's other people in the, in the uh, gym. It's entirely up to you. Um, but I'll just demonstrate kind of what we're going to be doing for lion's breath. So lion's breath is really this kind of opening up of the throat space by kind of opening up through the tongue. And it's a real great way to kind of release um, any kind of blockages in this area. It's just such a wonderful practice. Um, and basically what we do is we take a deep breath in through the nose and then as we exhale, we kind of exhale with our tongue. We'll kind of open up, go <sighs> then breathe in, pull in through that heart space, exhale out. <sighs> And I know for some, I know the first time I did it, I felt really shy, but we're all alone and we're in our space today. So go ahead and as we go into our um, cat space, our cow space, sorry, we're going to use that lion's breath. We're just going to let that space out. So go ahead and get onto all fours. And if you don't want to go into perhaps lion's breath, you're welcome to use your ujjayi breath. Again, that's still going to create that vibration in the throat space. Starting with your knees hip distance apart, your back is long, your hands are about shoulder distance apart. And as you're ready, we're going to breathe in and exhale out into cat pose. As you, sorry, as you breathe in, open up into cow, sorry. And then as we exhale, my bad, we're going to go into lion's breath as we go into cat. Breathe in, open your throat, open your chest. Exhale, breathe out, lion's breath. <sighs> breathe in. And out. <sighs> and really feel free to stick your tongue out. Big breath out. Empty out that belly. <sighs> Continue with two more big breaths in. And big breaths out. <sighs> and then as you're ready, coming back into tabletop position, we're going to kickstand our right foot out, then our left, and we're going to meet in our plank position. And just pressing into the hands. And then as you find a little shifting of your weight forward, so your elbows and shoulders are aligned above your wrists, drop down to your knees. And we're going to tuck our elbows and we're going to come right down towards the floor. Keeping your hands around your shoulder space, we're going to 
open up through the upper body into a cobra. Well, we're going to focus on our throat chakra here. So opening up a little bit, turning that gaze up a little bit higher, and then coming right back down. Pressing back and meeting in child's pose. Extending the body long, finding that long back, softening through the throat as you allow your body to rest down onto the floor. And then on your next inhale, we're going to come right back forward and we're going to come back onto our tummy and we're going to get ready for Sphinx Pose. So pressing your hands kind of directly underneath your shoulders and feet as the tops of your feet are resting right onto the mat. And we're really just opening up through the chest here. So we want to engage up through the abdominals, turn on the glutes, and lift up through the sternum. And just focus on that opening of the throat here. And then maybe feel free to rotate your neck from side to side, keeping that lift through the heart space. Shoulders are rolled back. We don't want to be feeling any compression here, so I want you to think about drawing that navel in towards the spine. Just opening, kind of loosening through the neck here. Good. And then we'll finish up with a couple more on either side. Good. And whenever you're ready, coming right back through center, pressing the hands into the floor, pressing back into child's pose. Letting the heart space, thinking of our Anahata Chakra. Letting our throat space soften here. And then as you're ready, we're going to come into Downward Facing Dog. Hands are wide, curl the toes under, press back down into the Downward Dog with our heels kind of resting down towards the earth. Don't worry, the heels don't have to touch. Opening up through the shoulder space and softening through the throat here. Take a couple of deep breaths in, and as you exhale, sigh it out of the mouth and really try to maybe even constrict the throat a little bit so you can create a little sound here. <sighs> Trying to find a nice equal distribution of effort in the feet and the hands. And then as you're ready, draw your feet in a little closer to center. And we're going to sweep our right leg up towards the sky. And as we exhale, bending in through the knee and guiding that right foot right into that low lunge position. Shifting our weight into the right foot so you've got that nice foundation here. We're going to bring our right, our left foot to meet our right finding ourselves in our forward fold. Maybe we've got our hands on our knees if we're taking care of our low back or we're coming into a forward fold. Bending in through the left leg, we're going to open up to the side and I want you to focus on opening up the chest, rotating through the neck, and then coming down into back to center, bending in through the right and opening up towards the left. And let's repeat that one more time. Opening up. Mm, back through center, bending in, other side, opening up, rotating the neck. And then back through center. From here, we're going to come back into that forward fold and go ahead and grab your elbows here. Let the head dangle. And again, you don't have to come to a deep forward fold. You can just do a half fold too. That's also fine. Let the head dangle. Let your body slide side to side like a pendulum. Softening through the throat. Loosening up the low back. Beautiful. And then slowly allow your body to slow down back through center. 
And as you rest here in a forward fold, maybe imagine yourself letting go of any preconceived notions of being unable to communicate. Maybe things like, well, I can't dare say that, or I can't, I can't create that because for whatever reason, whatever block you might have, can you let that go for a second? And check in with your true self. Check in with who you are and your ability to communicate and be heard. As you're ready, bend your knees and sweep your arms up, press into the floor and feel this like kind of growing like a flower. Bring the hands together. And from this space, I want you to lift up into a gentle back expansion. Should that work for you, you can stay neutral. And as you lift up into this gentle back extension, I want you to open up through the heart. Maybe turn the gaze up towards the sky. Open up the heart space and the throat. Press your feet into the floor. And then as you're ready, coming back and through neutral, release the hands down and back behind you. Interlace the fingers, roll the shoulder blades back, lift up to that heart space, open up the throat, lifting up even further. And then as you're ready, releasing the hands, coming back into neutral, letting the arms just rest here at your sides for a moment. Check in with your intention. I am heard. I am heard. And right now I have this image of that young girl in New York City where she, that statue of that young girl, and she's standing there with her hands on her hips and her dress is kind of flaring with the, su with the wind. And I think of this strong young woman who wants to be heard. wants to speak. With that same strength, I want you to press your feet into the floor. Sweep your arms up towards the sky. Take a big, deep breath in. And then exhale, release out as you ragdoll yourself gently down to the floor. Bend in through the knees. Breathe in, deepen into the belly. And as you exhale, release it all. <sighs> Breathe in, extend the arms, press the feet into the floor, exhale, release. <sighs> Breathe in, extend the arms one more time, exhale, release. <sighs> Inhale, bring your hands up towards the sky. Rest your right arm down to the side. Open up the left side of your body. Turn your gaze gently up towards the sky if it feels comfortable. Take your left arm, reach it down, reach your right arm up, open. Turn your gaze up. Come back in through center. Open up into mountain pose. Grow tall. Press your feet into the floor. Ground your body. Check in with your inner light. Take your arms up overhead. As you exhale, draw your belly button in. Come down into forward fold. Take your right foot back. Find yourself in your low lunge or in the kneeling lunge, whatever feels right for you. Inhale, lift your arms. Open your heart space, lift your heart, lift your throat. Release your hands to the side or interlace your fingers behind you. Roll your shoulder blades back and as you do, open your throat space. And for a moment as you are here, whether you're in lunge or kneeling lunge, whatever version works for you, I want you to imagine this light blue light emanating from your throat space. And as you're ready, release your hands, sweep your arms all the way up towards the sky, and then swim them down, framing your left foot. 
and gently bringing your right foot forward, finding yourself back in forward fold, and then take your left foot back. And just finding either kneeling lunge or a low lunge. Sweep your arms up towards the sky. Anchor your body in. I want you to feel the sense of stability, of grounding into your body. Release your hands out to the side. Interlace your fingers or press your hands on your hips as you open up your heart and open up your throat. Imagine rays of blue light surrounding you, coming from your throat, releasing. And then as you're ready, release your hands, sweep your arms all the way forward. Drop your shoulders. Rest your hands on either side of your right foot and take your right foot back. Find yourself in Downward Dog. Take a moment to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, sighing and releasing any tension through the throat. And then at your own perfect pace, coming down onto your knees, pressing back onto your heels and finding child's pose here. And just take a moment to notice the breath entering in through the nose, down the throat, down the back of the body. Maybe you can even notice the different cadence. You can notice the different temperature. And then as you're ready, coming up onto your knees, we're going to go into our camel pose, which is a big throat opener here. Now, camel can be a little intense. If you have a block, if you find it hard to be on your heels, you can place a block right beneath your sits bones and sit directly on a block. If you don't have a block, that's okay. If you are comfortable coming up into uh, lifted kneeling position, that's another alternative as well. Maybe just put a bit of padding under the knees if it feels uncomfortable for you. Now, as you're ready, going into camel, you can do this seated on your heels and just open up your space. You can come with your hands at your hips and open up your throat. You can also do this lifted, kind of in a kneeling position. And I want you to find whatever version works for you. You can also do the seated in a chair, kind of finding yourself scooching to the front of the chair. And as you kind of work your way into camel, I want you to think about rolling your shoulder blades back. So it's just this like kind of motion as you work your shoulder blades back and down. And as you do so, there's this lifting of the sternum. And we go into a bit of a deeper back bend here. But with our focus here being the throat, we're going to allow our throat space to open up. Try to see if you're holding any tension in your throat. Now for some, if full expression of camel is available, maybe you're reaching down to your heels. It's not necessarily available for all. It's quite an intense backbend. or you just do one hand, or just keep your hands on your hips. And then as you're ready, slowly turn your gaze forward, coming back into that neutral space. Great job. Let's come back into all fours. We're gonna go back into our cat cow with our lion's breath. And as you breathe in, find that opening of the heart. And as you exhale, release. Maybe seeing if you've got a little more of that deeper exhale. <sighs> breathe in. And breathe out. <sighs> and breathe in. And breathe out. And one more. <sighs> Wonderful.
wonderful. Now let's come all the way back into neutral. We're going to swing our legs all the way forward. Now if you've got that blanket handy, this would be a great time to go ahead and use it. We're going to go into a modified fish pose. Um, if you don't have a blanket, there's a couple of options. You can go into fish pose where we kind of bring our elbows back, hands are resting right on the top of our glute area and our legs are long and you can tuck your elbows in. And this can be intense for some. I know for me, this is a tough one. Um, and then just open up your heart space, similar to what we did with our camel, where we open up the chest and allow the head to rest down towards the floor. That's one, that's a version of, that is the version of fish pose. We're going to do a different version today. We're going to do a bit of a softer version. Um, taking this blanket and kind of bringing the blanket so that it sets at the base of your sacrum and it's long. So it's going to run along the spine here. And at your own pace, you're going to come down onto the pillow or the blanket and your head, if it doesn't feel comfortable resting your head down, you can always rest your head on the blanket and just open up your throat space, maybe lift your chin. Legs are long, inner thighs are squeezing together. And just allow here, as you rest yourself down, if this doesn't feel comfortable, if it feels too intense, take the blanket away and just rest your body down on the floor. And as you breathe into this space, focus on your throat, focus on that blue ray of light, soften your shoulders, let your heart space be soft. Imagine that ability of full expression of creativity. of honoring true self. Now from here, we're going to gently move out of this pose, take our time to do so. So begin to take a deep breath in. As you exhale, begin to gently tuck your chin in. So I was kind of coming from a deep where I really felt that opening in through the neck. So I'm really going to take my time. So a lot of strength in through the muscles of the neck here. And then slowly make your way up so that you can shift that blanket off to the side. And then we're going to come right back down onto the floor. Now, if you've got that blanket nearby or that pillow, you can make it a little flatter and we're going to lift our pelvis up and we're going to bring that pillow right to the base of our sacrum. <sighs> so however, maybe you've just got a gentle pillow, maybe you're still using, or you can use a block, that's also fine here. Now from here, we're going to raise our legs up towards the sky. Now I'm going to give a couple of options here. Um, this is certainly going to be a bit more of an intensive pose. It's called shoulder bridge, a uh, shoulder stand. And again, it's focusing on the throat area. <coughs> if it doesn't work for you, simply stay in this position here. Um, you can play around with maybe the placement of your legs, maybe moving them kind of forward and back. So you can kind of feel that opening through the throat as you kind of come in through your legs towards the crown of your head. Now, to come into shoulder stand, we want to be able to come into plow. If you've never done plow before, um, my recommendation is not to do plow, but um, you can do one of two things. You can stay in candlestick, or you can play around with bridge pose. Bridge pose also is really wonderful, be able to kind of focus on that throat space because a lot of the weight of our body kind of rests down as we come into bridge pose down towards our shoulders and our throat and our neck. So you can do that as well. That's another inversion would be a great alternative. Now, for those who are familiar with plow pose, we're going to come up towards the sky with our legs. 
We've got this nice padding, so it's going to raise our hips up a little off the ground. And then using our exhale and our abdominals, we're going to press ourselves up. Kind of just lift our legs. It doesn't have to come down to the floor. And I'm just kind of tucking my elbows in towards center, resting my hands at the base of my pelvis. I can right away feel this opening through my throat here. Now from here, I might experiment and play around with shoulder stand by lifting my legs up towards the sky. Again, we don't need to do this. We can stay in plow. It takes a lot of core, a lot of glute work here, inner thigh work here. And again, we can simply stay in bridge, maybe play around with lowering and lifting in bridge. And then as you're ready, if you are in shoulder stand, we're going to come back into plow. And then from here, we're just going to let our hands and our spine kind of guide us back down towards the floor, using your abdominals just to rest yourself back down to the floor. If you're in uh, bridge pose, let your chest a bit of a restful pace here. And then as you're ready, bend in through the knees, rest your feet down onto the floor. If you've got a blanket underneath your pelvis, simply take it and shift it off to the side. Wonderful. Now from here, let's open up our knees and our feet wide and just Kind of work your way side to side. Good. And then at your own pace, coming back and through center. Feel free to extend the legs out, finding their respective corners on the mat opening the palms to give and receive energy. And as you rest here in Shavasana, I'd like you to take this opportunity to just focus on the breath coming in, and maybe slightly constricting the throat as you breathe out, as you invite your ujjayi breath here. Just focusing on that throat chakra. Maybe releasing any wigglies that are still hanging around there. Maybe take this opportunity to clear your throat. Now I'd like you to soften your breath and just breathe naturally. Releasing your body. As you're ready, 
Let us deepen our breath in through our nose, out through our mouth. <sighs> Begin to move your fingers and your toes, just gently reawakening your body, your mind. Maybe you want to stay in Shavasana a little longer. If you do, please feel free to choose what works best for you. If you're ready, you can roll on to your favorite side. And we're going to take a few breaths there. your own perfect pace. You can slowly put yourself up to seated. Again, if you're in Shavasana, still stay there. Enjoy this quiet. And let's meet with our hands at heart center here. And let's repeat our mantra. I am heard. As you're ready, sweep your arms up as you breathe in through the nose. And then with a big exhale out of the mouth, bring your hands to heart center. <sighs> May your heart always stay warm, and may your smile always stay broad, and may the light that shines in me always honor the light that shines in you. Namaste. Thank you, everyone, uh, so much for coming today. This is our fifth chakra, Vishuddha. If you have any questions, feel free, or comments, feel free to pop on. I'm going to give you a few seconds if you want to pop on and ask any questions about what we did today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Namaste to you, too. If you do have questions about any of what we've come, we've talked about in the last five weeks, feel free to reach out to me by email. You know where to reach me. I wish you a wonderful day, everyone. Namaste. You're welcome. Oh, oh, yay. I'm so glad. <laughs> it's a yay. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I think we're going to do a lot of talking today. <laughs> I'm so happy. Have a wonderful day. Good. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye.